good afternoon depending on which part of the world we are from but i hope everyone is well and you are having a good day so on behalf of um, pi ladies ghana we i want to welcome you all to today's session and um, it really promises to be exciting and insightful especially with um a cv coach that is now so pi ladies night is a monthly session organized by pi ladies ghana where our speakers are invited to share with us their knowledge and then expertise in any area that would you know be of um, great benefit to the entire community so um yeah get prepared to pick up a lot of tips that will influence your journey in tech my name is Ya Mia Marcusi Fojo and I I'll be your moderator for this session. Um, so Pi Ladies Ghana is an initiative under the Python Ghana community. So there's a community in Ghana called Python Ghana and Pi Ladies Ghana is an initiative under this community. So we are focused on helping more women become active participants and leaders in the Python open source community. So yeah. So tonight, um, I'll just entreat you all to get ready for all the details you need to have a strong CV, a great cover letter, one that would attract recruiters and land you the job that you, you desire to be in. We have an amazing speaker. I've, I've, I've actually um, had an encounter with Na. Personally, she has reviewed my CV before and also my LinkedIn profile, which was like, you know, which really helped me a lot. So I believe each and every one of us here would learn a ton and would leave here with some, like, you know, with something useful. And I'm, I believe in the days and weeks to come, you'd hear, hopefully, yeah, a testimony. So I would invite Na on board to introduce herself and then, yeah, take us through the session. Thank you, yeah, for the introduction and thank you all for making the time today. Well, today we are going to learn a few things about how to put your CV together and a cover letter as well. And as ladies in tech, I am sure that, you know, there are some companies that you have targeted and one way to get um, your foot in the door is by basically getting a CV that would really speak to who you are, speak to um, your experience and your qualifications as well. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, I can. I can see your screen. Okay. All right. Great. So just a little background. Um, my name is Nalam Lamti and I am the founder of Elevate with NLL on Instagram. Um, we basically help young professionals like you to get ready for the job market and also to help them to land jobs that they would actually love. Um, another thing too that we do is to help people with grad school applications because with that you definitely also have to put a CV together, a personal statement and all of that. So basically we help you to look good on paper just to summarize what we do um, at Elevate. And then we also help you to um, know the right way to navigate your job search journey so hopefully by the end of today you'd learn a thing or two about how you can um articulate your value in your resume and hopefully that should help you also get some job interviews and in some cases it can just get your job immediately so yeah let's let's try and pay attention and then maybe at the end out um, take questions. So maybe at a point, if you have a question or something, you can just go ahead and ask. If you want to um, hold on and then ask at the end too, that's totally fine. You can just write it down so that at the end we can just discuss your questions. 
I hope that's okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right. Awesome. Yes, that's fine. Great. So, um, on the average, when a recruiter looks at your resume, it should take less than 20 seconds because just imagine sometimes there are some jobs that when they are posted within three hours, there are over a thousand of applications that have been put in. So you can imagine if there's a job posting that has been there for like a week or two. You can just imagine the number of people who apply for that particular job and if the recruiter has to, you know, look at each resume one after the other, I'm not sure you expect the recruiter to just spend, you know, like five minutes or 10 minutes on, no, it's not possible. It's not possible for a recruiter to do that for, you know, even if it's just like 100 resumes or 200 resumes, there's no way. So the thing is, usually recruiters just came through and there's something they are looking for. So within 20 seconds at most, they're expecting you to be able to convince them that you are somebody that they might want to talk to or you are somebody that might be a good fit for the role. And so you need to have that in mind when you are preparing your resume. You need to have that in mind because you need to know that if you are going to bombard the recruiter with so much information. The people who usually have resumes that are like five pages, please, nobody's going to read all of that in 20 seconds. So usually if you are, um, let's say a starter, so an entry level position, you are applying for an entry level position, I would always advise that you try to keep your resume as a one page. We'll, we'll talk more about that as we go on, but. I'm just trying to make you understand why it is necessary for you to just go straight to the point when it comes to your resume, because it just takes like 20 seconds. So you can just imagine, just count 20 seconds and then um, look at what you have now, your resume that you have now. Maybe you can do this after, but just take the resume that you have now and then give yourself... 20 seconds to go through and ask yourself if you are able to like pick the necessary things from the resume. So that's that's just something to think about. Now, first of all, you might want to ask yourself, like, why do I even need a resume in the first place? Like every time when I want to um sort of get my my life in order when it comes to my job search or when it comes to like getting ready for the job market one of the first things that people will tell you is please get get yourself a cv or get yourself a resume as time goes on we'll talk about the difference but then allow me for now to use them interchangeably but at a point i explained the difference so why do you even need it in the first place now um, the first reason is the fact that it's a marketing tool. So there are times where your resume is able to sort of market who you are, even when you're not in the room or you're not present. So you should always have that in mind that at any point in time, your resume is ready. You shouldn't always wait for someone to now come and ask you that hey, there's this opportunity and um, they are waiting for someone to send their resume immediately. And at that point in time, you don't even have a resume just because you've not started searching for a job or you've just not prepared a resume. Always make sure that even when you're not searching for a job, you have your resume down. You always need to be ready because you don't know when a great opportunity will come and then all you have to do is just send it immediately. And then now you are wondering, hey, my resume is not ready. Let me now go and try and put something together and all of that. No. So see it as this is something that I should always have. It's a marketing tool at any point in time, you know, as, as women in tech. So now I'm going to tailor this whole um, conversation or um, workshop into um, the tech industry because I'm, I'd like to believe that everybody here is in tech. I'm not in tech though, I'm going to try and speak 
your language. So um, you don't know when maybe some remote job opportunity will come and then they're asking for your resume or some gig is coming right now and then they're asking for your resume and then your resume is not ready all the time. Just have it in mind that your resume is going to speak for you. It's going to talk about who you are, your background, your experience, what you're capable of doing as a professional. So always remember that. And um, in the normal job um, process or the application process and all of that, right after you submit a resume, the next thing is they'll probably call you for an interview. If you're having like some really, really thick protocol going on, then probably your resume will immediately get you a job. But if you are going through the, like, the normal process and all of that, it will get you an interview and then that's the, that's the time you're supposed to show the personality behind the resume. So whatever you said that you are on paper, the interview is just to prove that, okay, this is the person that we have seen on paper. This is the, the person in reality. Okay. So always make sure that whatever you have um, on your resume, you are able to speak to it because you are basically saying that, oh, I've done this before. I can um, speak about this. I can talk about this. So if you cannot speak about anything on your resume, then there's a problem. If you cannot defend anything on your resume, please, there's a problem. So use today to go back to your resume and ask yourself, okay, so if someone just picks up something, I'm saying that I'm proficient in Python, or Power BI, if someone is interviewing me today and then the person is like, well, I don't really know a lot of things in Python, but someone is asking me to code something in Python. But I've said on my CV that, or my resume that I am excellent at Python and someone is asking me to do something basic and I can't do it. That That is, that is a huge red flag for a lot of employers so let's be mindful of that and the last reason is mainly because it's required by like a lot of organizations it's not even like a cover letter that i would say to a large extent that a cover letter is not really compulsory a lot of people don't read cover letters a lot of people don't require you to send a cover letter but when it comes to your resume like there's no job application anyway that I've seen that they don't ask for a resume. So just know that it's conk. It's it's something that for sure you need to have. So if you don't have one or yours is not in good shape, please let's let's really pay attention as we progress in this um presentation. So the next thing I'm going to talk about, so I kept using them interchangeably, the difference between a CV and a resume. Now, typically a CV is used for academic purposes. So like where you have all your, um, your topics that you used, um, let's say undergrad, you had your thesis topic, um, as time went on, you worked on a certain project, you want to put that in. I would call a CV something that has anything that has to do with you as a professional. So right from your academic background to the research part to various trainings that you've been at to like just anything that has got to do with you, that has got to do with you as um, a professional and that should tell you obviously that that will have more pages because you're going to talk about projects that you've worked on you're, you're going to talk about um what's it called you're going to talk about maybe your thesis and all that so definitely it's going to be long and these are this is usually required when you are going to apply for grad school or you're going to apply for a PhD or something, that is when you'd use a CV or a, an academic um, CV because you want to emphasize on the fact that 
you know, you are more into academia or something of that sort. Now, when it comes to a resume, a resume is more or less like um, for job search or for, in, in the case of you guys in tech, if you want to show off your portfolio or something of that sort, it's sort of like what you are going to use to show whoever you are, you are potentially going to work with that this is what I'm capable of doing. I want to I, I want to tell you all about my experience in a snapshot. So a resume should be very straight to the point. It shouldn't be shouldn't have a lot going on. Usually when you know what the person is looking for, when you know the job description, then you tailor your resume to fit the job description. Now, this is something we do for our clients. When, when we prepare um, resumes for our clients, we keep them very general, but we usually advise them that this is just like a master resume or a master CV. So now when you see a particular job that you are interested in, then you tweak it to make it align with that job. So for instance, that particular job is a data science job. And definitely a data science job would be different from maybe a product manager job. I don't know if I'm speaking your tech language well. Please let me know if I am. Um, yes, it's on point actually, I'm following. Nice, thank you for the response. Yeah, so, um, depending on the kind of job that you are applying for, definitely you might want to tweak your resume just so that it's in line with that job. And sometimes there are, there are people who see a job description and then they are like, oh my goodness, I can't, like this is way above me, like I can't do it. I usually advise my clients, you don't have to be able to do every single thing that they have put there in their job description. If you can do like 50% or 60%, you're good to go apply for that job. Like don't stop yourself and be like, oh, this, this, they're asking for this. Then where is the growth? If you can do 100% of the things there or you've ever done 100% of the things there, then where is the opportunity for growth for you? So that's something you, you need to be mindful of even as um, maybe you apply for jobs in the future and all of that. Don't let imposter syndromes, you know, come in and cause you to let go of certain opportunities just because of the fact that you feel like, oh, I haven't done this before. But truth is, if you are given the opportunity or you are trained and all of that, you would be able to do it. So that shouldn't stop you at all. So yeah, back to um, a resume, just always make sure that when you are applying for jobs, make sure that what you are sending, your resume is in line with the job. Don't have, sometimes you get, like, I mean, it happens to all of us. You feel lazy and you just feel like, oh, let me just apply. Like, it's not now that I'm come to read job description and then come and be changing words and keywords. Maybe I've seen that in the job description, they are big on some of, you know, the tech languages. I, I cannot say a lot of the things. Please pardon me. I'm a finance person. I'm not a woman in tech. <laughs> but then... um. I'm sure you, you get what I'm trying to say, where you've seen some keywords, you've seen the, the kind of things that the employer is looking for. Make sure that those things are featuring in your resume. Don't just send something general. So you are applying to, let's say, Microsoft, and then they, they wanted this and this. So you saw that in their job description. And then now you're going to apply to, let's say, Apple. And they have something else. and when you look at the job description, that gives you an idea of what the um, recruiter or the employer is actually looking for, the kind of things that they are concerned about. Because to some um, employers, they are concerned about people who, who 
you know, have great attention to detail, have, you know, they are proficient in a certain programming language and all of that, that should tell you that these are the things that they are interested in. This is what they are actually looking for. So you don't just forget about all that and then still submit something that you feel like, okay, let me just give you something. This is what, this is what I prepared, you know, two weeks ago and I'm not ready to put together another resume. So work with this. If it's going to go into an applicant tracking system, there's no way your resume will make it past because the applicant tracking system is working with the keywords in the job description. So the applicant tracking system is um, done to be able to, I think someone is raising their hand. Am I right? Okay. Um, no. Okay. I think All right, that's fine. All right, that's fine. Okay, cool. So the applicant tracking system is set by the recruiter so that it will pick some keywords in your resume. So even as you've um, um, uploaded your resume on that portal and all that, the applicant tracking system is going to just look for those keywords in your resume and if it realizes that oh you don't have that you don't have this you don't have that then forget about it that's when immediately you get a rejection email that we are sorry blah 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 we regret to inform you blah 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 okay so always make sure that you are you know tailoring your resume um in accordance to the job description yeah, and I have already said your resume is a marketing document. So you need to treat it as such. Like when I say market something, obviously I'm not saying just be passive about it. When you're marketing, if I'm marketing a pen to you, I'm, I'm in the position to sort of convince you that, yes, yeah, this pen is good for you. So see it in that same vein that, if you are marketing yourself, you are trying to convince whoever it is that picks up your resume that you are the best person for the job. You are the perfect person for the job. And that is why it has to be in line with the job description. All right. So now we are going to look at the format. Um, I think after this, I so I'll, I'm going to go through this really quickly because um, I'm going to sort of review two resumes is that correct um yeah am i right yeah two resumes okay right cool so i'm just going to go through this quickly so that um when it gets to the actual thing then we talk more about it but always remember that a typical resume would have a header please as much as possible don't go and put CV written up on your resume. There's no need to do that. Or some people write resume, so that's the title. There's no need to do that. What we want to see at the top is your name. Obviously, we know it's your resume. So we don't want to, we don't want you to now go and put that up there. Put your name there. Let it be bold. Let them see your full name there. And then right under your name, then you have your email address, you have your phone number. And please, I, I don't think I need to even say this now, that your email address has to be formal. It, it, you can not use sexygogome at gmail.com, right? I don't think I should be saying this now because I'm assuming that you know, right? So your your phone number and if you are applying for remote jobs or you are applying for jobs abroad and all of that please make sure that you put the plus two three three there don't assume that they would get it that oh i'm from ghana let me just put my zero five four then 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 no put the plus two three three even when i'm applying for ghanaian rules i still put plus two three three there so please let's have that in mind. And with your address, you don't need to put 
your entire house address day it's not necessary and it's actually not advisable so what you can do once again i'm saying these things because i'm assuming that um well these days it's easier to apply for remote jobs it's easier to apply for jobs abroad and you know tech roles are in high demand and all of that so i'm going to speak assuming that you would eventually also you know have to apply for jobs abroad or like remote jobs and all of that so when it comes to the address part always make sure that you have let's say if you're in accra it's okay to just put accra ghana like there's no need for you to go and put po box in 2022 nobody uses po box these days so there's no need for you to go and put you know po box um ct this 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 no you can just put accra ghana and that's fine okay and um if you want to be extra like me you can add your linkedin url and that is only if your linkedin profile is in order if you know your linkedin profile doesn't look nice or if you know like your linkedin profile is not interesting or there's nothing going on there please don't put that there because if somebody or if the recruiter is looking at it they'll probably go and click on it and if they go and click on it they're like okay let me go and see this person's linkedin profile and see what's going on meanwhile your linkedin profile first of all your picture you don't have a picture or your picture is a selfie i don't want to go into linkedin today so <laughs> let, let's let's just get to that please if your linkedin profile doesn't look really good um i will advise you to you know like put your url there but once it looks good I would say you should go for it. Like make sure that your LinkedIn URL is also over there. So these things that I have mentioned will be on the same line, just under your name. Okay. So after that, then you are going to go on and then have a professional summary. Now a professional summary, this is not compulsory okay if you are an entry level person and maybe you don't really have a lot going on with regards to your experience and all of that and so you feel like your resume is going to look empty even as a one pager then fine you can go for it like you can have a professional summary that will talk about your the kind of skills that you have you know, if there's any major accomplishment, let's say you were the valedictorian um, in your year, you can talk about that, you know. So just, just about three or four lines, and that is fine. That should do it. So something to sort of summarize your, um, your background. Yeah. After this, you'd see, okay, so I was going to say you see an example, and there it is. So... Hopefully you can see my screen. Um, a strong communicator, a competent legal researcher, and a good legal writer with experience from working with various law firms as an intern. So this person, um, let's say this person in particular didn't really have a lot of work experience. So she was going to apply for an entry level role. So, but she had been an intern at different law firms and so she had to talk about that and then another interesting thing about her is the fact that she graduated as the best student for her year in law so definitely this is something that you might want to put there the, the professional summary should be like your career highlight so sort of to convince or something to just get the recruiter to be like hmm okay this is interesting so don't just go and put something boring or just put um, the the normal things, the cliche things, and um, someone who has great attention to detail and blah 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 blah. Don't don't do that. Just make sure that whatever you are doing when it comes to your professional summary is intentional and it's also specific, especially to the job you are applying for. And then I went on to say that. 
possesses a good foundation and understanding of legal matters and can perform legal research and analysis. So as per the job description, this was very, very important to the recruiter or to whoever put up the job description of the vacancy. So definitely she had to make that feature because clearly it's something that's important to them. And then there's another one that I have down here. I don't think I want to spend a lot of time having to read it, but the point is that just make sure that you have something brief, but straight to the point and then something that will be impressive, right? Okay, so after that, then you can talk about your key skills and competencies. Over here, it's all about keywords. So you go into the job description once again, then you look for the keywords. What, what are the key things they are looking for? What are the major things I should put there? So please permit me to use um, finance language and then you can translate that into tech language. So for instance, when it comes to technical skills in finance, we would be excited to see someone have, you know, great financial reporting skills, someone being able to do financial planning, budgeting, forecasting, you know, um, data analysis. Well, that's a little bit of tech language. Um, you know, like the technical skills, I'm sure you guys know, I, I would have loved to hear some of the technical skills from you guys, but I don't know if you, you'd want to say any. Um, I can say one. So, like, okay. programming, that's a technical Nine. skill. Yeah, data okay. analysis too. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I don't Great. know if anyone would like to share some though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say um you could add um, mobile app development if you uh mm -hmm. into it and you specify what you do, um what framework you use, say Android or maybe okay. use Flutter or whatnot, yeah. Okay. Nice. I'm learning tech language. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, you do that when it comes to your technical skills. Now we come to the soft skills or the transferable skills. Now with that, they are like the general things you can, you know, have that anyway, like teamwork, you know, negotiation, um, emotional intelligence, you know, the, the kind of things that are not exactly like hardcore skills, but then they are necessary, you know, attention to detail, blah, blah, blah. And those things definitely, when you're reading the job description or you're even reading, you know, in a job like, let's say, finance or accounting, attention to detail is a big deal. So even as a soft skill, it's it's necessary, you know. So just, just make sure that when you're putting your CV together for a job, you're intentional about it. You try to even think for the recruiter. So even as you are reading the job description, you're trying to understand, okay, the thing should be able to do this and this, or these things will be my responsibilities. Okay, in order to do, or in order to implement all these things, I need to have some skills. What kind of skills do I need to be able to do this kind of job? Now, that is when you'll be able to put all these things there. Now, the software proficiency part so you guys this is where it comes in the kind of language that you use if you guys use um what's it called python r um spss um i don't know you guys know what i'm talking about right so that is where you put all those things in there as well and then if you speak more than one language um, so French, Spanish, German, whatever, you can also add that. And then any major accomplishments or awards, you can also feel free and do that. Typically, I would advise people that when, you know, like you, you can put technical skills and then you list the things and like as in you have technical skills, then um, you mention the things, but then you divide it with, comma, and all that. Then transferable skills, you put all of that there. Software and proficiency to you put that there. The language, if it's just English, you can just take that out. If the 
is any major accomplishment you can add that but if there isn't you can just forget about it and that's totally fine so something like this is fine is acceptable so once again depending on the job description you look for the things that you know you can clearly see that they are important to them right okay i'm going to try to move a bit faster this is also an, another example of the key competencies and achievements once again you get most of these things from the job description like it will make things very easy for you you know what to put there and what not to put there right now after that you move on to this section and that is your professional experience or your work history and this is where you talk about your full-time role if there's any let me say this now like i said at the beginning your resume is supposed to directly speak to the job description i've been saying this this whole time right so if there's anything from your experience that is very relevant to the job then you put that in but if let's say even as a woman in tech you are also you also have let's say a your own business so you're a makeup person and all of that you do hair and all of that you don't need to apply for a tech rule there's no way you should also add that to your cv like it's not relevant to the rule in any way let's say you are really great at cooking and all of that you're going to apply for a tech rule like i don't want to see that on your resume i hope that makes sense so as much as possible make sure that um yes i get it it's all part of your experience and all of that but just make sure that you only put relevant work experience there okay and um maybe you might think that okay i i worked as an administrative assistant somewhere that is not exactly a tech rule should i add that to my work experience well yeah you can because with that you can say that you know you've been able to gather some organizational skills you know what it means to work um as a an administrative assistant and you're able to, to put things together to put things in place to make things more organized and all of that so yeah you can do that but if let's say you've been working in the tech industry for like 10 years and you're going to apply for a, a job so you worked with let's say three different tech companies and you're going to apply for a job and this admin assistant role was like 10 years ago usually had at Advice that you don't even put that there because it's not necessary. You're going to apply for a tech role. That's the most important thing to the recruiter. So this whole thing is very subjective. It a lot of thought needs to go into um, any application that you do, and you realize that like it's it's not always as straightforward as maybe people make it look. Like you put together one CV and that's the end. So you just go on and then apply for it and all that you get it so the next thing to about um your experience is the fact that you need to talk about the job title so whatever role that you had let's say um where you were working you were the senior tech um whatever or product manager that's the only one i know or like data analyst or something like that you can put that day and then the date so the month and then the year there's no need to put the full dates there so the start date and then the end and the name of the company if you are applying to a role that is not in ghana you you may it's not necessary i usually don't put that there the city and the state or the city and the country but if you want to you can some um some companies require that so you need to have that in mind and once again you need to remember that sometimes it's not so straightforward and another thing too is when it comes to your professional experience in the bullet points that you are putting there make sure that you are speaking about your 
you know, whatever role that you played. And don't just put responsible for this, 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 or I worked on this, this, this. Maybe as time goes on, I'll explain that more. So just take time to compare these two statements. The first one is responsible for handling customer problems. And then the second one is resolve approximately 30 customer problems on a daily basis, resulting in a high degree of customer satisfaction. Which one would you choose? Obviously the second one, because that, that is more impactful. That is more catchy. The first one just seems really flat and it just feels like, okay, you were handling customer problems, good for you. But when you come and say that you result approximately, like you're putting numbers there. So always make sure that when it comes to your work experience and all of that, like you have, you know, numbers, percentages, and please make sure even as you put the percentages, the numbers and all that, you can defend them. They ask you, okay, you said you reduced cost by 30%. How did you do that? First of all, then you, you see how you did that. Okay, what was cost at first and what is cost now? We want to know, we want to verify that you reduce cost by 30%. How did you do that? Okay, so please have that in mind. Make sure that you are actually, you know, like, like not just saying something flat, but you are giving something impactful. So I have put a couple of examples that you can look at. So this is someone who, all right, so you have where the person was working and then the role they played and the person has put the year there or something like that and then just give their general um, responsibility. So supervise staff of 12 with full responsibility for accounting, finance, credit, and collection, warehousing, and mailroom functions of $15 million publishing, $50 million publishing company, right? So definitely the whole point I'm trying to drive home today is when it comes to putting your CV together, please don't be lazy. Like clearly this, this I'm sure by now is telling you that, hey, like, so much work has to go into this. I have to channel my inner Shakespeare and, you know, like get my grandma going on. And please, I'm not, I'm not an English person. I am a tech person. I just want to focus on my coding. Nobody should come and stress me with plenty English. Well, that's okay. That's why we are there for you. Elevate with NLL. We'll do that for you. We'll, at least we'll put something together for you for starters and then when it's time for you to apply for a job when it's time for you to you know there's a particular application you want to go with then you can just tweak it a, a little bit so that it will be in line with your cv and then you're good to go right okay so the next thing to do is to talk about your education and your certificates and I'm sure with this you'd already know that you'd have to put the name of your degree or your major then the name of the school if you you know you had a first class you might want to put that there if you were the valedictorian you might want to put that there and all of that and then obviously the year that you graduated so like so something like this would be nice okay now you can also add the extra things so any volunteering activities or leadership activities or anything that you've been up to. So usually I just make that part in one section. So volunteering activities and leadership activities. With the honors and awards, usually you just talk about those things in, if let's say you were a valedictorian, you say that in the education section, if you were, um nominated or you won employee of the year you you should add that to your work experience and then make sure that like you you bolden that or something like that so that they can easily see that so we are going to just talk about some um some general do's and don'ts 
Okay, so with the do's, you know that, well, I've said most of these things already, but let me just say a few other things again. Um, just always remember that when it comes to your experience, it's not just about your pay the experience so maybe you did an internship but they didn't pay you or you even volunteered to do some job somewhere and they didn't pay you it's still work experience so sometimes that's the mistake we make we feel like oh they didn't pay me for this thing and why am i even going to put it on my cv it's experience so put that there it's necessary and um i've, I've said this a number of times tailor it to the rule and also your cv should be in reverse chronological order so the most recent one there that is your experience the most recent one should be on top same with your education so you don't go and put shs and usually i don't advise shs on your resume so you can take that out but if you are applying to a company in ghana and your school is a really good school you can go ahead and then put your SHS day, but if you are applying for a com and um, for a role outside Ghana, nobody cares that you went to Avery Girls or you went to Wesley Girls or you went to Holy Child or whatever. But if it's in Ghana, some people will care, and then they have this impression that oh, if you went to um Avery Girls, then you are really good, or if you went to this school, then you are really good. So once again, it depends on the rule, it depends on the place, it depends on a whole lot of things. And that is why you cannot use one CV for every job application. Okay. So with the don'ts, try not to be using pronouns like I, me, my in your resume. Like just make it very general or just Try as much as possible. Like we said, it's a marketing document. It's not myself. It's not the time where you're coming to try and have like a conversational language on it. No, that is meant for the cover letter. And there's no need for you to have your references on your CV or your resume. I mean, it's not necessary. Usually, I have a separate document for references. So... I won't advise that, you know, in that same resume you have, no, there's no need. And there's no need for you to lie on your resume. Well, by now you should know, like I said, that you should be able to defend everything on your resume. So if you're lying, I'm not sure of how you're going to defend it. And don't put personal information there unless they're asking. And typically they will just ask for age or something like if the company is asking for your age, fine, you can have that. But there's no need for you to put your your TIN number there, your marital status, your picture. No, don't put your picture there. There's no need for you to now go and put your height, your weight, unless it's a modeling, whatever. But I really don't think that is necessary. Okay, and make sure that's like your resume looks professional it looks catchy when i say catchy i'm not saying go and use plenty colors all over the place but like just make sure that it looks professional and it's easy on the eyes as well so i think that is about it for now before i do a short review because we have done one hour so far so Maybe I'll just take questions while I, you know, get ready yeah. for the review. Okay, um, now I have a question, please. All right. <laughs> okay, so um, I think initially I just wanted to know what the difference between CV and resume is, but you've answered that and you spoke mm -hmm. about... um. So when it comes to a job I want to apply for and mm -hmm. I feel that, oh, maybe I don't have the number of years of experience, you know, they are asking in their job description. Right. Um, yeah. Do I still go ahead, you know, yes, to apply? Yes, please do. <laughs> yes, please. Please okay. go ahead. And um, so when you do that, make sure that you are not stating anyway let's say they are asking for six years 
and just make sure you're not stating anywhere in your CV that, you know, like you have six years of work experience. No, you don't. But also make sure that you are sort of silent on the number of years of work experience you have. So if typically, if I have a client who is going to apply for a rule and then they are looking for, let's say, six years work experience and then the person actually has seven I would have that written in the professional summary, for instance. So I'll make sure that it's there so that you are looking for six years. We have seven. But in a case where we are sort of disadvantaged, so we don't have all the six, I'll not mention it at all. I hope that makes sense. That, that really makes sense. Thank you, Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking yeah. that you should, you know, you can, you know, some people might say, oh, maybe you should just lie and then, you know, oh, right no, then. no, 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 just be silent. <laughs> just be <laughs> silent on it. Even with the age. So some companies have, let's say, they don't want for their entry level positions, they don't want people above, let's say, 27. Hmm. And you want to apply. But yeah, like 28, I would advise you not to put your age there. Be okay. silent on your age. Let them see your experience and want to make an exception for you eventually when they find out that you're 28. So they mm-hmm. see your work experience and then they're not going to say before they even, you know, look at what you are made of. They'll just go like, oh, this person is 28. We are not looking for someone who is 28. So let us forget. Let them rather see your experience and be like, hmm, this person seems really good. Then later find out that, ah, like, your age is not there. How old are you? And then you go like 28. Then they, they start wondering, hmm, should we just make an exception for this person? Or, like, we should just tell them, oh, we are sorry. We are just looking for 28. I mean, they are human beings. People change their minds all the time. So, yeah. These are the little tricks. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. All right, so I'm going to share my screen to show someone's CV. I was allowed, well, am I allowed to show the person's name, Gloria? Um, yeah, I believe she's here. So because she shared it. For herself. <laughs> my allowed, before I share it, I just want to get the go ahead. Is Gloria here? Hello, please, I'm here. Hi, yeah. Please, should I go ahead? Yeah, you can go ahead, it's fine. All right, thank you. Okay, so let me just do that real quick. Okay, so we have Gloria's um, CV here. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, I can see. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, this is Glorious CV. And, well, based on what we have spoken about already, she's missing out on the 20 seconds rule because if we had to look at her CV, there's so much for. Okay. So, I'm, I'm coming to talk like a recruiter. Okay. Please don't, I mean, don't take it in any way we are learning okay so first i'm going to be like hey i don't know exactly what to look out for because there's so much information going on like four pages of information definitely i would be wondering okay what 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 should i look out for okay let me let me look at her education that's cool and even with the education There's a lot still going on. So I don't know. At this point, I don't know if this is supposed to be training or this is supposed to be maybe a certificate she got or something of that sort. That's another thing. It's not too clear. Now we know, okay, she went to Legon. That's fine. And then she has put program offered there that's fine but it could look better okay and then we also have central university blah 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 yeah it could still look better we have wesley girls high school that's nice um 
like I said, if it's in Ghana, a recruiter will be impressed that she's a gay girl. If it's outside Ghana and you're applying for a job, to me, all these things go away. Like your crutch, primary, JHS, even SHS, they should go away. If it's in Ghana, you can choose to keep your SHS if you went to a really good school. If you feel like your school is not something you're proud of, just be silent on it. You can just delete it from there. So I realized that she tried to do a summary of her skills, and that's that's a lot. Okay, that's a lot. These things should be in a cover letter. Like these things, this is where you talk about, you know, I have excellent oral presentation, which I acquired and demonstrated in blah, blah, blah. These things, where you are talking, it's a conversation of some sort. That should be what a cover letter is about. As for the TV, it, it's just like saying that this is a candidate. This is what the person can do. You know, this is the kind of school the person went to and all that. But when you have, I did this, did that, those things in your CV, it loses that. So please, this is cover letter language. Um, maybe I should just, I should just avoid this. Okay. And then when it comes to the work experience, okay, I see some nice things going on. Um, she, she tried to explain what she does, efficiently managed, nice. Okay, so I see some percentage going on, that's good. And then she talks more about what she, she does. So this is, this is, this is good. This is not bad. Okay, this is fine. Um, yeah with the work experience and just a little trick one way you can get work experience or like the right words for work experience is through your description once again if you're applying for a job that let's say you've already done before or you're in a similar role ah, that even makes it easier for you whatever they put there as responsibilities try it means you've probably done it before so just try and rephrase it and you know, make it more spicy and rich and then give it back to them. Don't just go and copy and paste, but yeah. And then leadership experience, that is also cool. Um, volunteering experience, I, I'm not too sure how different that is, but with that, you don't even need to do a lot of talking at all over here, like, I feel like there's still a lot of information for people to digest. I want to try and look for a CV for someone. And then, hmm, okay, let me, let me, I do do this. But you people are going to make me share my CV with you. Let me try and pull up. I'm very happy to see this. Me especially. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm going to try and pull up I have different CVs to be honest so depending on the rule depending on you know like the purpose sometimes I just want to show a one pager okay so exactly what I was describing your name up here your number your email so you can see clearly that over here i can actually click and it will take me straight to you know my gmail or something then i can send myself an email if i click here i'm going straight into my linkedin profile or whatever then accra ghana and then this is not compulsory but this was because of the rule i was going to apply for i put like the key or the the main things that the rule requires so let's say corporate finance, financial due diligence and valuation. They were looking for someone who has CFA level one and I've cleared that. So clearly I want to put that there and then FMBA, blah, blah, blah. Now to my experience, 
So I went straight into my experience. I, with this, I wanted just a one pager. I didn't even want anything beyond, okay? So I didn't want to put a professional summary there or anything of that sort. So I went straight into it and then they were big on the experience rather than even the, um, what's it called? Your background in terms of education. So I knew that definitely this experience section needed to be very loaded. So I went on to talk about the various things that I do currently. So I I went into detail talking about it and all of that, that, you know, I execute both buy side and sell side financial due diligence for financial and corporate strategic buyers, blah, 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 blah. I mean, you're trying to make them see that, yes, I'm bringing value on board. And then my other work experience as well, and then with my educational background too, I spoke about my master's and then my undergrad, my exchange program. Then I went on to talk about my professional qualifications. So that is aside like the normal, you know, undergrad, postgrad and all of that, but the professional um, certifications I'm pursuing. Then I put my skills down here. So once again, like I said, like these things are very, very subjective. There are times where I put my education on top. When I'm applying for, let's say, a role that is has got to do with development finance, I don't really have a lot of experience in development finance, but I have a master's in development finance. So because I know my experience is not going to be really heavy on development finance, I'd rather put my education up there so that when any recruiter looks at my CV, one of the first things they'll see is this person has a master's in development finance. So let, let's, you know, first check, you know, that kind of thing. And then they look at other things. I won't say I directly have experience, but they'll say, okay, she has, you know, a master's in it, she has done this, 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 she could potentially be able to do this job. You get what I'm trying to say. Now with the skills to, depending on the kind of job that you're applying for, you can put the skills on top. You can put the skills right after, let's say you have your educational experience or you have your summary or whatever. Like these things you can, depending on you, Right, so a lot of thought has to go into this, and you can't have one. This is one of my many CVs because this was how I wanted it to be for that particular job that I was applying for. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. yeah. so I think that's about it. And I will take questions. I think we have just about 15 minutes more. So I'll just like take questions and then that should be it. Yeah, I think yeah, we way past time. So if there are any questions, you can type them or you can type them in the chat or you can unmute yourself and then ask. Okay, so um, it looks like Gloria has a question in the chat. She's asking that how how will someone just coming out of SHS pen down his or her CV or resume? Yeah. Okay, so that's a really good question. Usually, I would advise that if you're coming right out of SHS, you get some volunteering experience. So just, just even if it's teaching, whatever it is, like just go and get some kind of experience. But while you are at it, make sure that you are also building yourself in terms of um, professional development so that at least you can have, you know, some major things on your CV. You can say that, oh, I I'm skilled in this programming language just because you've been able to learn those things by yourself. You can have a few things to put there. There are also virtual internships online. Um, you can just search for them as well and then do them and you can add that 
as your work experience. So yeah, you can can do that as well. Thank I you. Your question, your question has been answered. Okay, so um, she's asking another one. What of this person is kindly engaged in some IT course like graphic design? Right. So you can you can have that on your resume, and if you've done anything, any kind of um, let's see, you people have worked on some projects in. That's I don't know. You said it's an IT what or a design something. Yeah, I think graphic design and it's like an IT graphic. Okay, so you can you can just if you worked on a particular thing, it may not even be a job. You worked on a particular design or something like that. You can talk about that. So you can even put it there that as a student. It, in this whatever it's called and then you you say exactly what people did if it was something that was hands-on and it wasn't just like you know they taught you over there and you didn't get the chance to practice if you got the chance to wow. practice you can say exactly what you did and then that would be fine well, oh. hey, um, amanda it looks like amanda is can you kindly mute yourself? Let me just mute her. Okay. Um, so Alice is asking a question. How will you have a resume of two pages when you have so much work experience, achievements, and others? Yeah. So, yeah, if you if you have a lot of work experience, fine. Two, a two-pager is okay, right? A two-pager is fine. But if you are now starting out, a one-pager is perfect so i don't have anything against the two page but once you begin to go beyond the two page i have no a i think that. i think she's asking you know like if you have so much experience how will you have a two page like it's, it's quite important. oh okay okay so yeah. once again that's why i have been emphasizing on the fact that you should tailor it to the job do you get it so if you are tailoring your resume to the job that you're applying for, you take some things out. Definitely. Even with your work experience, even if you have like a tall list of, you know, things that you did, um, you know, like several bullet points, go back to the job description. Look at the kind of thing that they are saying will be your responsibilities. If you check what you have, on your resume and then you feel like oh i did this and this and that's not really in in line with you know the kind of job or the kind of responsibilities they said in this job description let me just take that out for the purpose of this particular job in another application that experience or that bullet point that you deleted might be necessary so that's why i always say have a master resume that is there and then with that, you build the other ones, the ones that you use for your job application, because all you have to do is just maybe delete things or like tweak things and all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So in the end, last, last, you get your two pages oh, or yeah. even less. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much, Na. Um, mm. I don't know if there are any more questions from any, like anyone in the audience. I guess that would, all well, right. yeah, that would be your, if there are any more questions, you can put them in the chat and I'm sure now would attend to them after the session. Yeah. Right. I will try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you all for making you. the so, time. Yeah. So now please, um, so now it's on social media, on Instagram, Twitter. All right. Tell me if I'm wrong, but then on LinkedIn as yeah, yeah. elevates, yeah, elevates by N L L. That's na lamli lamti. So you can so follow I'm just her. I'm it now. Okay. So you can just. Okay, sorry. Elevate with. Okay. So we share a lot of like 
free content um, with regards to your job search, CV stuff, LinkedIn, grad school, like there's a whole lot of content there, interviews especially as well. So yeah, you can just feel free and check out our IG page. So now is now hot cakes. <laughs> she has premium um, services. I, I got lucky to have her. Like, I think I got a free service some years back. So I had the privilege of reviewing my CV with her. So I don't know if hopefully, maybe you, if you follow her account, you would get free services in the future as a promo. Or a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Oh well, you can get a free. Um, well, it's still free. The review, and then we let you know what you need to work on, and then if you want us to, you know, work on it for you, then we let you know how much you need to pay for it. So that's like the premium stuff. But there's always a free service and that's the review where you get feedback on your resume mm. okay all right all right thank you now um thank you it's been a very enlightening session for me I'm, i've actually learned although i have my cv reviewed i guess it's never i can never say you finished reviewing your cv as you said we should have different um Right. For different roles. So yeah, there's still improvements yeah. to be done. Um yeah. I just want to say thank you to Na for joining. We really, really appreciate all the useful information you shared with us. And everyone here, all the ladies in the house, including if there are men in the house too. Yeah, thank you so much for having our back. Um we really had a great session and we are definitely looking forward to the next session. So probably these Ghana nights um the ninth probably these nights is always scheduled every month. So just look forward to our next event and do learn, invite someone and yeah. See you soon and have a great evening and a weekend. Bye everyone. Thank Bye. you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.